Right, midweek update. Um, had a few parts arrived. Getting brand new clips for all the underside for the brake lines, etc. So shout out to James for sending me those. For the ones that I haven't got, I need to order separately. I've also got the Raptor tintable paint has arrived and the Raptor go. And as previously mentioned in the last video, frozen white. So this is the tint that will tint the four bottles that come in there to paint the underside of the car. And I've ordered a Hyundai, what I thought was going to be a silent pump. Uh, so it's silent compressor, sorry. However, they've sent... Sorry, as I was saying before, the battery died. Yeah, they've sent... I ordered a 50 litre silent Hyundai unit. And the reason for... Or silent, they call it silent. Um, is only 60 decibels. I think this is 97 decibels and I wanted the quiet one in order to not piss off the neighbours and just It seemed a better more modern unit to be honest and it was adequate enough So anyway, I'm a little bit peed off about that as you can understand, but I've messaged The seller on eBay to see what they say because it seems pretty stupid to me that they can list one product And send a completely different unit. So I'll see what they're gonna say about that. So yeah, today's Tuesday, so that's an update on the parts that have arrived. I'm trying to source a cr engine crane. I'm concerned about putting the new shell, with it being in such good order, up onto the spit. So my intention are, as per the last video, is to borrow my brother-in-law's engine crane and crane the car up really high so then I can spray the back side of the car here drop it down and then spray the, the front side. So the mission this weekend is to get the underside painted. And if I've got enough time and I've allowed it enough time to dry, then I might look at putting the rear axle on and be fitting the fuel tank and possibly putting the front subframe on. But we'll see how we get on. But yeah, that's just a quick midweek update for you all. So um, yeah, I'll let you know how we get on with the compressor. So better explain what I was doing there. I've, because I'm basically, as I'm building up the car, I'm turning it concourse, really, the way I'm going. So what I decided to do was replace every single clip and bolt that holds on the underside. James, shout out to James, as you can see here, hopefully, this is the list of all the clips that he built up and put together in order to restore a racing Puma. And obviously mine's gonna be the same. So. I've put all the ones that I've got. I still need a white handbrake clip, six of those. I can't find them yet, so I'll keep searching. A black fuel filler bolt, probably not necessary. A gold heat shield clip. Not sure if I'll be running the heat shield, so I'm not sure I'll need them. And rear brake line white clips. I'd like to find those as well. So that's what I'm gonna try and find now. Little update on the compressor. I spoke to Hyundai. They're collecting the compressor tomorrow, which is Friday. I had hoped to use the compressor to paint the car on the weekend, so I'm not sure what's going to happen there. So I'm now going to look to prep the cage, sand the cage back, uh, etch primer or metal primer, and then spray it blue. The same blue that I've painted the steering wheel previously, and the same blue that I've done the calipers in, which is the RAL 5002 Ultramarina blue. So that is probably going to be this weekend's goal, and I might look to clean the underside and get it all ready, prep ready for paint. I might be able to borrow a friend's compressor, so I might still be able to paint the underside white, but within the Raptor, but we'll see about that. But yeah, for now, cheers James, thanks for sending me the clips that you had, and I've managed to source all the other ones. I will have, I do have some spares here, which I might sell back to James, or if anybody's after a few clips, just let me know. Um, yeah, that's all for now, so um, hopefully next time you see me, will be what's it Thursday night now so you will see me Saturday at some point and I will be hopefully painting the cage and we'll see how that comes out so uh thanks for bearing with me thought I'd just give you a little update to all the little bits that I'm doing in midweek and uh yeah I'll see you Saturday welcome back to the channel guys um 
Oh, I gave you a midweek update, didn't I? It's now Saturday, so bad news on the compressor. Uh, it was supposed to be collected yesterday and the replacement arri replacement one arriving, but it hasn't. Which means that I won't be able to paint the underside today, which I'm a little bit good about. However, there's plenty of other stuff to be doing. What I might do is continue to clean up the lines, the handbrake cable, sorry. And then put some paint on it. And what I might try and do, I said I was going to use some flexible paint to see how it goes. But what I might try and do and see how it works out is I had some in here somewhere. Some hammerite paint, which I might brush on. He says, but he can't find it. Right, I'll find that anyway. So yeah, I might try that on the handbrake lines. The other th main thing to mention is I spoke to Chris Burbeck on Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, we had a nice chat with him for about 45 minutes and I've decided to pull the trigger on the Super 1600 front arches and front bumper. I don't know if I've mentioned that. It's about 720 quid, so it's quite a lot of money. But I always wanted the extra width. It's an, an extra 30 mil wider than the FRP, so it's significantly wider and looks even more aggressive. So therefore, my front bumper and the wings the yeah, Ford Racing Puma ones that were on the car are now for sale. I will get some photos and take them down, but they're in pretty good order. I think the bumper needed a little bit of repair. Uh, I haven't got a price in mind for them yet, but as I said, I'll uh, get, take them down and take some photos. So if anybody's interested in those, just let me know and I'll do a good price on them for you. Um, yeah, I'm a bit disappointed going back to the fact that I can't paint the underside of the car white today. But... Um, yeah, let's have a look around and a fiddle with what we can do. I might look at taking out the rear windows on the new shell. And then from there, I can look to sand down the cage that's in there. Go and get some metal primer paint, spray paint. And then look to spray the cage with the same paint that I sprayed the steering wheel with. So, oh, it's getting quite a bit of water in here, which is... Not great, to be honest. And in the rear. So this car cover is shocking. So that's a bit annoying. So that's something for me to do is dry, dry the car up. But yeah, let's try and move these glass panels because I'd want to paint this cage here. And I need to prep the prep that. So uh, yeah, that's what we're going to try and do this morning. But anyway, I'll put you on time. Let's see how we get on. I'm going to need another cover. This is absolutely shocking. To be honest, what I might do is take it back to where I bought it and just say look it's not even waterproof I mean look at the amount of water in there so uh, that's a bit annoying but there we go let's, uh, let's make a start anyway I think I'm going to wear a mask when I'm painting. Anyway, metal primer. It was 10 quid, but and it was white, so it's the only colour they had. But that should be fine because it means when I put the blue down, this stuff, it means it should be obvious if I missed any. So I'm going to put two thin coats of this on and possibly three. Uh, so I've primed, I cleaned the metal down with some paper to get rid of the rust and some sanding and use some sanding pads. The metal primer should give it a little bit more adhesion when I put the blue on, so yeah, that's looking pretty good. Not fully covered, but enough to get it to tack to. So my plan is obviously to let that dry for 20-30 minutes and put a layer, thin layer of blue on, and then two or three coats more. Once that's done, I will mask off and wrap. Once it's fully dried, that is after 24 hours, 48 hours, I then completely wrap the cage. So so when it comes to spraying the inside white, no white gets onto the, the blueness of the cage. So I thought that's why I'll do the blue cage now. Uh, and then I can fully cover it up and wrap it up. So when I do the whole interior in white, I know that the cage is done and I can unwrap it and it should look good. And it'd be a good contrast between the white of the interior and the blue of the steering wheel. And the cage was going to be that colour as well. So uh, yeah, it should look pretty good. Um, 
I got some, I was talking about getting some flexible paint for the brake lines, but I'm gonna try hammered silver. I don't think it's got any much flex to it at all. However, the lines are sort of shaped as they will be when they go back on the car. So I'm gonna put a couple of coats on that on the one I've sanded off to see how that looks. If I move it around and it cracks, I've not really lost anything, so I can just cover it in a, a flexible paint then. So I'm gonna brush this on because it doesn't need to be a, a smooth finish and it's also a hammered, so it should work quite well. So yeah, let's let that dry. Um, a bit disappointed that I couldn't do the underside today, but if I can complete the cage today, I think I'm pretty happy. So um, yeah, let's put some paint down on this brake line and see how we get on. A must. So I went down really well. I'll show you now. Take this off. By the way, excuse me, can't recommend these enough. They just clip onto most cans because it just gives you a bit more control when painting. I think they're about eight pounds, so I bought a couple. Excellent tool. Now it went all exceptionally well for the first coat. I used a whole can. I've got some good spread. The only place where I messed up is where the cap clipped part of the cage. Which I'm a little bit cheesed off of that, as you can imagine. Using the white undercoat, I think was a good idea because it's brightened it up a bit. I was a bit worried that the RAL 2001 was a bit too dark in color. However, as you can see, that's looking brilliant. There's a few sections just in the corners, down on the inside there. I need to do another bit on here, but I've got another can. So I'll give it another coat over, there's a little bit down there, but I'm really happy how that's come out. Obviously, that will match the steering wheel. The seats are a little bit, little bit more light blue than that, but I'm happy how that's gone. Obviously, oh, you just quickly as I'm walking past it, you saw me do a first coat on these lines. I think it might actually work all right. So I'm gonna, as that's, now that's drying, let me give this another two or three coats. But back to the Rao Blue, you, as you can see, it's exactly the same color as on the rear calipers. It's gonna be the same color that's gonna be on the front calipers. It's the same color as the steering wheel. And when I get the livery, li livery, 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 all the stickers and that, the Ford Motorsport, I'm gonna ask them to print them in Rao. 5002 as well so it's going to be pure white car inside and out underneath silver frame silver lines but then the contrast between the white and blue should look really nice if you imagine all the shell is white and then the silver wheels i have had a look last night at what white wheels would look like on a white shell with the blue and it looks amazing so i can Imagine me getting either another set of wheels or getting these powder coated white, but we'll see. I'll leave them at silver for now. But yeah, it's looking really good. The other thing I need to do is scratch this down, rough it up a bit in order to spray it white, but I'll wait till I get my compressor for that. But for now, I am extremely happy how that's gone on. As you can see, it's a nice even spread. I do need to give it a second coat just to thicken it out and obviously it'll make the paint a little bit tougher, but I've got a good even spread. In here is proven to be quite difficult, but I think what I'll do is next time I'll just give it a good going over and pull it away quick to stop it getting any build up. But there's another bit in there, you can see showing along this edge. But I think the colour looks great. I'm really happy with that. So, uh, yeah, so let's have a look. What I'll do is, once I've done my second coat and I'll let it dry for 48 hours, I'll mask around the edge there. And then as I said, cover it all up. And then when I paint it white, there'll be a nice, hopefully smooth line when it transitions from the blue to the white. I mean, I could go around there and have the blue legs. And that might be easier to have a straight line where it's white, which I might consider. 
but I'm thinking it might be better if I just do all of that white. So uh, yeah, that's enough. Just waffling for the minute. I'll carry on and do another coat on these brake lines. Sorry, the handbrake cable. Let's see if we can make that look a bit better. But, uh, yeah, for now, pretty happy about that. Seems rain is stopping play. However, before I finish up for the day, I'll just give a little recap what I did. So I gave the cage a second coat. I don't know if you saw that on time lapse. Uh, that's come up really well. And I thought the colour was looking a bit flat, and then I realised, of course, once I've painted the inside white, um, I'll be lacquering the inside, so I'll be able to lacquer the cage at the same time, so it'll make the colour pop a bit more, and I'll be able to lacquer this because you'll probably see that the colour is a bit flat compared to the powder coat colour versus the can colour. You can't really see in the light it actually looks similar but this is a little bit flatter in colour. So uh, I'll buy a can of that to do the steering wheel lacquer and obviously the, the cage would be done once I paint the inside white and lacquer it. I'll show you what I have been doing as well since the camera's been off. I removed the hinges for the bonnet. I'll clean them up and get them painted. I've also started trialing, trialing fitting this. Just put you down for a sec. So this fits in here. It covers the open arch gap. It's not a bad fit. I've made a little cut there in order to make it fit flush. What I'll do is I'll put some holes in and drill some holes in. So I'll pop rivet probably three there to hold that corner in and then pop rivet. One or two there, two there and then two here. And that should hold it nicely in place. So, and then what I'll do is I'll use some seam filler, sand it back. And then when I paint it white, it'll look good. You'll also probably see that this is shiny blue and this is dull. And that's because I've started Scotch Bright in it to make it dull. So when I paint it, as you can see, it's shiny there and it's dull here. So when I paint it white with the compressor and the white paint, it'll attack to it and give a nice finish. So unfortunately, it's really beginning to piss it down, as you can see. So I had hoped to of Scotch Bright at the whole of the engine bay, to be quite honest with you today, because that would have been another job done. However, I'm not going to be able to do that at the moment. But my intentions are to come out again tomorrow, which will be Sunday, to do some more work. So, um, yeah, pretty happy with that. I also cleaned up the fuel lines and ordered some olive green spray paint because I don't really want to be paying for new ones when they're in good order. Just need freshening them up with some paint. These have had two coats. I think they're going to work, to be honest. I'll give it a third coat. It doesn't look good, great at the moment, but once I've given it a third coat, I think they're going to work quite nicely and you won't be able to see too much of them underneath and they won't ruin the sort of concourse look I'm going for. Uh, anything else? No, I think that's about it. So gutted that I wasn't able to paint the underside, but I'm really happy that I managed to paint the, the cage. It's not something I thought I was going to do. Uh, I would highly recommend, as mentioned earlier, these can guns are called. Can gun one. They make life so much easier. It was a bit more difficult using it in tighter gaps when doing the cage. However, um, yeah, highly recommended. I'll put a link in the description. 
the cage, two small run areas, not very noticeable. So I'm really happy that I managed to do that pretty well without just using the uh, rattle cans. And I'm really happy with the colour. So that's going to be it for today. I'm going to go and have a beer, I think, or cider. And then tomorrow, I'm going to try and continue to scotch bright the engine bay ready for paint and then I'm sure there's some of the little bits I can get on with but for now um yeah that's it I'll catch you tomorrow hi right, guys today is Monday um I said I was going to do some on Sunday but I got right on it Saturday so I felt like crap so all I did yesterday was have a takeaway roast and a takeaway dominoes however today is Monday I've got the final clips that I was putting together in order to Place all of the parts on the other side of the car, so that's a complete pack now. I only actually need two of these, I think, but I think they come in a pack of ten. Uh, so I've got some spares of those. The compressor wasn't collected, as I said it would be on Saturday in the end, so that's been collected tomorrow now, which is Tuesday. And hopefully, once they get that back, then they'll be able to send me the correct compressor, which means hopefully I'll have it for next week. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I feel I'm get as though I'm getting really somewhere on the project now and just getting the cage done just giving me another boost and the thought of being able to get the underside paint and start putting all those parts that i've been doing up for so long onto the car is uh it's pretty exciting stuff so um yeah thanks all for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and remember to share it if you uh, think anybody else would enjoy it so thanks for watching i'll see you all next weekend